In this video, we'll cover how to remove and install the threaded freewheel. Hello, Calvin Jones here with Park Tool Company. Here's a quick run through of what we're going to do. For removal, we'll engage the freewheel tool and turn it counterclockwise until the freewheel is removed. For installation, we'll lubricate the threads and thread it on the hub. We'll fully seat it with the chain whip or we'll use the force from the pedals. It's a pretty simple process as long as you have the right tool for the job. But before we talk tools, we'll note that not all rear sprockets remove the same way. There's another cog system called the cassette. And the procedure in this video are for the freewheel systems, not the cassette systems. If you're not sure what you've got, watch this other video to help you determine which is which. Tools and supplies needed are a large adjustable wrench, grease or anti-seize to lubricate the threads, and the correct freewheel removal tool. Park Tool offers removal tools to fit most freewheels. However, there will be some older models where no Park Tool removal tool is available. Freewheel manufacturers have different tool fit designs, and here's how to tell which tool you'll need. Remove the wheel from the bike. Now fully remove the axle nut, or if you have a quick release skewer, remove the skewer and skewer nut. Next we're going to find our tool fitting. So look down the center of the freewheel and look for any splines. Splines run inward and can be difficult to see, but if you see splines, you'll know you need a spline type tool. Now count the number of splines. If there are 20 splines, use the FR4. If there are 12 splines, check the brand of the freewheel. To be clear, we're not looking at the brand of the hub, just the freewheel. If it's a Falcon brand freewheel, use the FR7. If it's not a Falcon brand freewheel, or if there's no brand name, measure the outermost diameter of the tool fitting. It will likely be 23 millimeters, and if it is, Use the FR 1.3. There is a much older discontinued Shimano standard that is 20 millimeters. See the manufacturer for the correct freewheel tool. If there are no splines, then look for a notch type tool fitting. Count the number of notches. Also measure the diameter from outer edge to outer edge. If there are two notches and the tool fitting measures approximately 25 millimeters in diameter, use the FR 2. If there are four notches and the tool fitting measures approximately 24 millimeters in diameter, use the FR3. If there are four notches and the tool fitting measures approximately 40 millimeters in diameter, use the FR6. If there are four notches and the tool fitting measures approximately 32 millimeters in diameter, use the FR8. First remove the wheel, and then the axle nut, or if you have a quick release, remove the skewer nut. Inspect the freewheel and select the correct type of remover. Our first example is a notch type. Notch type freewheels have poor designs for tool engagement, so we'll use the axle nut or quick release skewer to hold the tool aligned and snug to the freewheel. Turn the tool counterclockwise. It may take a good bit of force to loosen the freewheel from the hub. After it's loose, remove the axle nut or skewer nut. Continue to unthread the freewheel. For freewheels using the spline type tools, you do not need to hold the tool in place with the nut because of the deeper engagement of the freewheel. An alternate method is to use a bench vise. 
Tighten the tool in the jaws of the vise. Grab each side of the rim and turn the rim counterclockwise as seen from above. The basic process for installation is first, apply a healthy coat of lubrication to the threads of the freewheel. Lack of lubrication encourages threads to seize, making it very difficult or impossible to remove. Grease is acceptable in this application, but a longer lasting and more durable option would be an anti-seize compound such as ASC-1. Being careful not to cross thread, rotate the cogs to engage the thread. Stop if there is resistance and double check your alignment. Inspect that the hub is centered in the freewheel. If the axle appears off center, the freewheel is cross threaded. Continue threading the freewheel clockwise by hand until the freewheel feels fully tight. If available, use a chain whip to fully seat the freewheel. If you don't have a chain whip, install the wheel on a bike, hold the brake lever, and push on the pedals to seat the freewheel. The process is complete, but before you go, a few quick things. First, if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. It makes a big difference and helps get this information out to more people. So thanks for that. Now back to the repair. Be sure to check your shifting, both the limit settings and the index adjustments. This other video walks through the whole process. It's also a good time to check your chain for wear. The last thing you want is your new freewheel to get damaged from a worn chain. And finally, if you want more information on any of the tools that we've used in this video, head over to parktool.com. Thanks for watching. And again, if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends about it. And of course, subscribe to our channel for more repair help from Park Tool.